Hi, I'm Emily, and I'm a level one chef. I'm Lorenzo, and I'm a level two chef. Hi, I'm King. I'm a chef instructor at the Institute of Culinary Education, and I've been a chef for 20 years. This is my hangover fried rice, basically. I would love to level up someday, but this is not the recipe that's gonna get me there. <laughs> I was born eating fried rice. <laughs> Just a fun combo that you can really kind of mess up and still be good. Whenever we have something in the fridge, kind of put it together and make fried rice. Today's a little bit elevated. First element of fried rice is rice. rice. I like using day old, day -old rice. rice. It's dried out a little bit. It's uh, not sticky. You don't want to have a clumpy fried rice. Sometimes you don't have old rice, but you still have a hangover, so you have to figure out what to do about that. In this case, it's going to be make rice. This is our day old long grain rice that we'll be cooking today. So what I have here is just your standard Uncle Ben's type of rice. Wee! I'm going to mix it with water. So I'm going to bring this rice to a boil. Go, go, go. I'm going to cover this up and bring it down to a simmer now. And I'm just gonna leave it 10-ish minutes and my rice is cooked, look at that. I have two kinds of protein going in. I have Spam, I love Spam. So this is Spam, sort of like a pork cold cut. I'm gonna slice it up to put into my fried rice. So I've got some bigger chunks and then I'm gonna make these ones some smaller chunks. A little Spam surprise in every bite. There. Today I have 10 jumbo shrimp. Take the heads off, the tails off, I just like to squeeze the end and pull it off in one shot. These are really plump and yummy. We are gonna also devein them. We're gonna put that in there. We're not gonna eat that. And our shrimp are clean. Put a little lemon juice in it. I'm just marinating it slightly. Two cloves of garlic. Add like salt and pepper to it and crush it. Now let's add this delicious sesame oil. And I have dill. Dill's fun. Mix this all together. It smells really good. And there you go marinated shrimp. I have eggs. eggs. This is really not for beginners. I am just going to crack six eggs. It's a complicated procedure. Am I gonna attempt a ninja? Am I gonna attempt a ninja? Yes! That's tough. Pepper. Salt. And I'm just gonna whisk this. That is that. And these are my proteins for my fried rice. Now, this is easy peasy. This is Chinese, Chinese sausage, sausage, which is so delicious, my gosh. We're gonna cut this in small rings. It's cooked. I could take a bite out of this if I wanted to. I'm gonna use it as a topping. Next up, we're gonna cut our chicken, slice it around the same size as our shrimp and our sausage. Okay, vegetables. <laughs> First thing I'm gonna do is the scallion. scallion. That'll be quick and easy. I'll save you guys for later. The scallion I'm really only going to use as a topping at the end, but I'm chopping it up now because uh, now's as good a time as any. Seize the day, carpe diem. For the sauteing of my vegetables, I like using these bottom portions. Are my knife skills incredible? Yes. Yeah. Just a little fancy. It's nice to have it a little fancy sometimes. For the garnish, we're just gonna use the green tops, tops of the of scallions. The scallions. Slice on the bias and nice and thin. And this will just be that Pretty little accent on the top of the darn dish. And the next thing I will do is grate my ginger. I'm just gonna chop off a little limb here. Peel this carefully. Great, my ginger. And we've got our ginger. I have some frozen peas. We've got delicious, crunchy water chestnuts. Let's do garlic. garlic. I'll just take my chef's knife and just smash. Slice it up, chop it up a little bit. I have some minced garlic, which I had already I like the smashed garlic a little better because if you slice this too small, the little pieces of garlic will burn. And there's our garlic. I have two carrots. carrots. Do I have to peel this carrot? I never do. I really never do. I just wash it. It's fine. Easy prep. Carrots are difficult. They're so tiny and rolly. Something that makes life a lot easier is to cut things in half so you have a flat surface so that they don't roll around. Cut it in half. Oh, did she just give good advice? Damn. I'm gonna watch this back and be like, Emily, you gotta work on your knife skills. A little thinner, because I want to cook evenly with everything else. And uh, I think we're just about ready to go here. And then I have green beans cut maybe three times in a bias. And I have, oh, wow, I love mushrooms. These are pretty big, so all I'm gonna do is cut this in half. Now, our Napa cabbage. I'm just gonna slice it up, boom, boom. And onion. onion. For me, that's a staple of fried rice. We are gonna actually just use half of it. Onions kind of give me gas, so I undershoot a little, you know? Shh, don't tell. <laughs> Follow the lines of the onion and just slice right along with the onion. Ugh, really putting me to work today. Easy. 
there's our onions. So I've got my onion all chopped. The edamame has already been shelled, so those are ready to go. And we have our vegetables. So let's go, folks, let's do it. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cook all of my uh, stuff together, make some fried rice. I'm gonna cook our rice in a wok. So we're gonna use canola oil. oil. And I put in my butter. And then I'm going to put my onions, onions and carrots. Some garlic. I like to start off with the egg. Don't worry if it gets browned a little bit, it's delicious. There's a fine line between toasty and burn. We don't want burn, we want toasty. I have a tendency to accidentally burn things because I don't have a great sense for cooking. Go figure. They're starting to get a little brown and translucent and yummy looking. Okay, you look fantabulous. I'm gonna toss in with my garlic, and my ginger, and my spam. And I'm gonna start trying to brown that spam. A little bit more vegetable oil. So we're gonna get our Chinese sausage. sausage. We're gonna build more flavors into that. You have to poke it a little bit whenever you make sausages. We want that fat to flavor the onions, to flavor the garlic, which in turn will flavor everything else we put in here. And now you can see the juice is bubbling inside. Chicken takes a while to cook, so let's put some chicken in there. My sausage that's already been cooled. Just to be fancy, we're just gonna cut it on an angle. Okie doke. Chinese sausage is prepped. This is starting to look really delicious. I'm getting a lot of ginger in terms of the smell. Now we're gonna say hello to the shrimp. Egg. It's been marinating a little bit in because I have lemon juice. You can make it rubbery if you overcook it. So stay here, don't leave your pan. Just watch these guys. My biggest problem when it comes to cooking is that I'm incredibly impatient. And you can see the shrimp changing now from that Opaque color, they're starting to turn pink, which means they're getting cooked. That smells really good, you guys. We haven't reached that point yet where you can smell through the videos, but you soon will. Yum. I'm gonna take it out. And if you think I didn't cook it enough, it is still cooking in this lovely jubbly bowl. So, this was a big half onion. I'm just gonna put these guys in. Oh, hello, red pepper flakes. Put the green onions in. My garlic, sesame oil, shiitake mushrooms, water chestnuts, a little salt, a little pepper, napa cabbage, rice wine vinegars. Everything is pretty much cooked down. We're looking really good right now. Let's go in with our rice. rice. I'm gonna add some garlic powder and also a little bit of salt. Maybe not the ideal rice for this situation, but it is better than nothing. Let's let this get hot again. And I'm just tossing my frozen peas in here. And you are going to go right in this. I'm just mixing it together. We're gonna put a little oil in here and we're just gonna crack our, our eggs. eggs. Half. It'll also be my topping for later. Mix our egg. Just throw in some of our edamame beans. The sauces that I have here are sesame, sesame oil. oil. Not too much, just a little bit. Because it is pretty potent. A little bit of uh, soy, soy sauce. sauce. We're gonna eyeball it, you guys and this is rice vinegar. And I'm just gonna mix those up. Oyster sauce, love this stuff. I'm going to add my eggs in. I'm gonna try and get the egg kind of all over everything as much as I can because the egg makes everything delicious. The egg does a lot of the hard work of this fried rice. Now, hello lovely juices. Wow, 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 wow. Yowzer, folks. Now, in you go. Warm it through. I don't need to cook ya. And one of my secret weapons, Crab paste. A little bit goes a long way. I think this is just about done. I've got fried rice. And that's our fried rice. I'm just gonna plate it and add some toppings new. So I have my delicious Spam and egg fried rice. Get a little bit of everything, green beans. Those jewels of shrimp and sausage and chicken. We're gonna hit it now with our Japanese mayo. You use a little sriracha. sriracha. Yeah. <laughs> now, I take a little bit more egg. Yum, yum. My Chinese sausage, delicioso. Furukake. Seaweed, sesame seeds, and this one has bonito flakes, which is a uh, smoked fish shaved really thin. Ooh, I love a little fresh skin. Scallions. There you go, folks. You know me, I'm gonna put a little ketchup on the side, but you don't have to do that. This is my fried rice for uh, when you're feeling broke, hungover, or eh, just when you want it. And this is my fried rice. And this is my fried rice. I hope it tastes as good as it looks, because I think it looks really good.
Mm-hmm. Yeah. It just sings. Typically, to be humble, it'd be eight-ish. I'm giving myself a ten. Why not? You know that mouthfeel from the shrimp, from the crab paste. You, you taste every little component in there, which is great. I'm gonna have another bite. Fried rice is a dish that truly only is limited by one's imagination and what's left in your refrigerator. Let's take a look at how each of our chefs approached this widely varied dish. Emily cooled her rice briefly, which helps to keep rice grains separated as they condense a bit upon cooling, becoming hard, and thereby maintaining individual grains that can be coated with flavorful fats and seasonings when frying. Lorenzo and King cooled their rice overnight, which has the advantage of having some of the water evaporate very slowly under refrigeration. So their rice was even harder and will stay separated even better. Emily's protein was Spam and eggs. I love Spam, I do. Spam is a mixture of ham and pork. If that sounds redundant, let me explain. Pork is what we call meat from any part of the pig. Ham, however, is pork that comes from a specific part of the pig, its hind leg. There might be other meats in there too, I don't know. That's what Spam's all about, you're not supposed to know. Pork and ham are ground together, mixed with sugar, salt, water, usually potato starch, and sodium nitrate, which gives Spam its distinct pink color and acts as an excellent antimicrobial in cured meats. It also slows rancidity, so you won't have any developed off flavors or odors. Lorenzo used shrimp and Chinese sausage as his proteins. Shrimp adds a wonderful seafood flavor, while Chinese sausage is a broad term for various sausages that tend to be on the dry side, have slight sweet and salty flavors, and a very fine grind. They're also high in fat, so they carry flavors very well. King used sliced white chicken meat which is lower in fat, lower in connective tissue and myoglobin, which is why it's so light in color. He also uses Chinese sausage and shrimp, just like our level two chef Lorenzo. All three chefs included garlic and onion, both of which have flavor compounds that become more mild when cooked in oil. When you saute garlic and onions in oil, you extract the lipid-soluble flavor compounds and infuse the rest of the dish with these aromatics as the oil is dispersed throughout. All three also used soy sauce, which is a fermented product of soybeans. It's dark in color and very salty. Each incorporated sesame oil as well, which is also dark and infused with a toasty, nutty sesame flavor. It can be a bit overpowering, so you want to use it sparingly. Because it's powerful, you guys. You don't want it to just overpower everything. Emily was the only chef to add ginger, which is distinctive in flavor and adds a slight bite due to the presence of gingerol, which is a chemical relative to capsaicin in chili peppers and pepperine in black pepper. She also added carrots for color and slight crunch. Carrots retain their bright orange color when cooked in oil because oil protects beta carotene from oxidation and bleaching. She added green peas, which were frozen. Frozen vegetables are great to use in a dish like fried rice because they retain their shape and nutritional quality well. Lorenzo added carrots and Napa cabbage. Napa cabbage is rich in vitamin C and has a fair amount of calcium and tastes mildly aromatic unless overcooked when it can have more of a pungent sulfury flavor because it contains hydrogen sulfide. He quickly stir fried his rice with no prolonged cooking, so it wasn't a problem here. He added fresh shiitake mushrooms, which will add moisture to his rice and water chestnuts. Water chestnuts contain phenolic compounds that form cross links in their cells and it strengthens the cell walls and keeps water chestnuts persistently crunchy even after prolonged cooking. King added shelled edamame, which is fresh soybeans for a bit of extra protein, crunch, and green color. He also seasoned with oyster sauce made from fermented oysters and fish sauce, traditionally aged in barrels for weeks to months. All three of our chefs added eggs, which are a traditional part of fried rice. Emily and King scrambled their eggs with the rice, while Lorenzo cooked his separately and added them at the end, causing Lorenzo's eggs to look like an addition instead of an incorporation. Whoops. 
Emily and Lorenzo use non-stick frying pans. Non-stick coating on pans of this type are made from Teflon, which is like a plastic because it's a polymer of long carbon chains stabilized with fluorine atoms. This works well, and you won't have any starchy rice that clings to the bottom of the pan. King used a wok, which is a more traditional method of cooking fried rice dishes. Woks conduct heat extremely well, both in the center, which is the portion of the pan receiving direct heat, and also around the slanted sides of the dish, keeping all ingredients warm. All three cooked at high heat for a short amount of time. Emily garnished with crunchy green scallions and pepper sauce, along with our ever-present ketchup. So we aren't disappointed there. It's spicy, tangy, and tasty. Lorenzo garnished with scrambled eggs and scallions. King also used a pepper sauce and crunchy raw green scallions, but added a visual as well as tasty addition by utilizing Japanese mayonnaise. It's made with only the egg yolk as opposed to American mayonnaise, which typically uses the whole egg. It certainly added visual appeal to King's fried rice. There truly isn't a right or wrong way to make fried rice. It's often just a matter of what is available at the moment the hunger strikes you. Next time you're looking to clean out your leftovers, we hope you'll take inspiration from our chefs.